Right, straight on with a bit of Latin American now with that cheeky little chappy, Pedro the Green Cockatoo, brought to life this evening by Keith Beckingham on Hammond C3. <laughs> Pedro the Green Cockatoo, Keith Beckingham on Hammond C3. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we'll be hearing the very last recorded sounds of the Free Trade Hall Manchester Wurlitzer towards the end of the programme. But for now, here's a track from one of the last CDs made on that magnificent instrument. The disc is called One More Time, and Len Rawl is at the console with Perfidia.
Perfidia from Len Rawl at the Free Trade Hall Wurlitzer in Manchester from his CD called One More Time. And as always, more details about that CD and indeed all the other recordings on the programme can be obtained from our Radio 2 helpline on 0800 022 022. Right, time to find out what's happening in the world of electronics at the moment, and who better to put us in the picture than one of our busiest concert artists, John Walker. Thanks, Nigel, and hello again. I'd like to start tonight with details of something which should be of great interest to all Klaus Wunderlich fans. After two years' extensive research, Alan Ashton has put together a complete discography of this world-famous electronic organist. It's the first time such a listing has ever been compiled, surprisingly enough, and, as well as details of over 160 releases, there are also extensive biographical notes and a full schedule of Klaus's own compositions. Klaus Wunderlich fans were left rather high and dry last year when it was announced that his German record company, East West Records, were terminating his contract, and at the same time the decision to disband his UK fan club was further disappointing news. But on the positive side... Klaus is still producing new recordings privately, and everyone hopes that one day he'll come back to the UK for another concert tour. In the meantime, this new discography makes fascinating reading, all 30 pages of it, and I'd highly recommend it to all Klaus Wunderlich fans. And if you're the owner of a vast Klaus LP collection, well, you never know, you might find you've got some real gems and rarities. So if you'd like further details, you can write to Alan Ashton. And he's at 1 Acclesfield Road... Middleton, Manchester, and the postcode is M24 2WT. And as usual, you can get details of all of the addresses and telephone numbers which I give out tonight by calling the Radio 2 helpline. <laughs> The Hammond B3 organ has been growling its way through gospel, rhythm and blues, rock and pop and jazz since the first one was built in 1954. And to celebrate such a rich history, a new book called The Hammond Organ, Beauty and the Bee by Mark Vale has just been published. The Hammond B3 and its right-hand man, the Whirling Leslie Speaker, became an instrumental pairing that changed organ music forever, so such a tribute is well deserved. The book, which is packed with photographs, explains the tone wheel system that produces the famous Hammond sound, and it also reveals the secrets behind the B3's draw bars, presets, pedal board, percussion, and all the other features that made the Hammond organ sound so unique. And for players, there are tips on buying and maintaining Hammonds and Leslie speakers. The author of the book is obviously a jazz and pop organ enthusiast, and the players he refers to are very much in the style of Jimmy Smith, Keith Emerson and Jimmy McGriff. It's a great pity, really, that with the exception of Ethel Smith, no reference whatsoever is made to the huge number of highly popular easy listening organists such as Klaus van der Lisch, who internationally have probably done more than anyone to popularise the Hammond organ. However, the book makes fascinating reading, especially if you're a Hammond nut. It's published by Miller Freeman Books USA and is distributed in the UK by Omnibus Press. Price £14.95. News now from a few organ clubs, and we start with Basildon Keyboard Club, and a date for the diary, Saturday the 18th of October. The club's holding a charity concert, and the artist for that evening is Jean Martin. The venue is the Nicholas School in Langdon, and the concert starts at 8pm. You can get more details from John Oran Jackerman on 01268 415506. The theme for the evening is Last Night of a Prom, so don't forget to take a Union Jack. And whilst you've got your diaries open, the next day, which is Sunday the 19th of October, Banbury Organ and Keyboard Club are also holding a charity night. The club's currently having a membership drive too, so why not go along to one of the meetings? These are always on the third Sunday of the month, and the venue is the General Foods, Sports and Social Club. Concerts start at 7.30pm, and further details are available from Peggy Taylor on 01869 337 137. 
the Northampton Society, the Neen Valley Organ Club, has moved to a new venue, the Frog and Fiddler Hotel in Kingsort, Northampton. Concerts are held every third Monday of each month, starting at 8pm. And next month's show, which is on September the 15th, features local organist Daniel Watt. You can call Derek Draper at home on 01604 410706 for more details about the Society, but you'll be made most welcome if you just turn up on the night. And finally, next month, the Bedford Electronic Organ Society are celebrating their 25th anniversary. They're holding a dinner dance for members on the 10th of September with organist John Daly, but the club holds its usual concerts on the third Thursday of each month. And you can call Vera Webb on 01234 750659 for more details. The Bedford Society have a fabulous venue, the Addison Centre in Kempston, and it's got a huge stage and great acoustics, and I'm certainly looking forward to playing there myself in May of next year. Well, that's all the details from my own notice board, and next time I'm with you, I'll be taking a close look at the very latest keyboard from Technics, the KN5000. And here's a sneak preview. <laughs> Music from the Technics KN5000 and our thanks to John Walker for his contribution to the programme this evening. Well, here's a track we haven't played for a long time, a duet featuring, well, it's a pipe organ and Allen computer organ. Lynn Larson is at the console of the ex-Paramount New York Wurlitzer in the Century 2 Civic Auditorium at Wichita. And Carlo Curley is operating the controls of the Allen in this arrangement of Schubert's Marche Militaire. <laughs>
Lynn Larson and Carlo Curley joining forces there on Wurlitzer and Allen organs, respectively, with Schubert's Marsh Militaire. Well, having heard the sounds of an Allen classical organ, that leads us on rather nicely to a track from a brand new CD on Allen Digital Theatre Organ, which, according to the inlay, has three manuals and the equivalent of 17 ranks of pipes. Now, it's played by someone who's on the staff of the Allen Organ Company in America, theatre organist Tom Hazelton. All the music is by the great George Gershwin, and this is Swonderful. Wonderful from Tom Hazelton at the new Allen Digital Theatre Organ from a CD called Great Songs of George Gershwin. Well, here are some completely different electronic sounds now from another fairly new instrument, the Yamaha AR100. And from her CD called What's New, here's Chio Sunamoto with Colours of the Wind.
Colours of the Wind from Chio Sunamoto on Yamaha AR100. Well, we heard a pipe and electronic duet from Lynn Larson and Carlo Curley a little earlier, but this time more pipes and electronics from just one man, that great musician Brian Sharp. On this recording, he's playing the ex-regent Poole Christie in the Sanford Park Holiday Centre near Poole, plus various other keyboards. And this is Brian's arrangement of that beautiful and haunting composition by Trevor Duncan, Girl from Corsica. <laughs> Wakeman inviting you to join me Saturday at 7.30 with special guests Jim Mullen and Ruby Turner. The Big Band Gala with Barry Forgey conducting the BBC Big Band. Join me Saturday, Radio 2 at 7.30. Don't miss it.
This is Nigel Ogden with The Organist Entertains here on BBC Radio 2. Now, I know this isn't one of our usual request programmes, but I would like to include something this evening for a lady called Mrs Alice Fox in Sheffield, who celebrates her 90th birthday on Saturday. Many happy returns and congratulations, Mrs Fox. And seeing as you had a very famous brother, I thought we really ought to have some music played by him on this special occasion. You know his name, of course, but I'd better tell everyone else that we are about to hear the one and only Reginald Dixon.
The unmistakable sound of Reginald Dixon at the organ of the Tower Ballroom Blackpool with four golden elders. The world is waiting for the sunrise, the very thought of you way down yonder in New Orleans and Liza from one of Reg's many live broadcasts and that particular extract dates from 1963. Right, a touch of the classics now. Carol Williams on Technics GA3 plays the Vivace from the Oboe Concerto in F minor by the 18th century composer Telemann. <laughs> by Telemann, Carol Williams on Technics GA3. Now, the ex-Odeon Manchester Wurlitzer, which has lived in the city's free trade hall for the last 20 years, is finally about to be reinstalled in its third home by the Lancastrian Theatre Organ Trust. Now, something we've never done before on The Organist Entertains is to follow the removal, reinstallation and reopening of a theatre organ throughout the whole project, so we thought we might attempt to do that with this particular instrument. Well, the removal of the organ from its present home is obviously the first stage in the process, and a few weeks ago I went along to the free trade hall to meet up with the head of the LDOT technical team, Eric Halsall. Well, Eric, here we are at long last, (laughs) just about the final day of the Free Trade Hall Wurlitzer in this particular home. Uh, I think it was, well, it's just, it's not far off two years since the final concert, is it now? No, it isn't. It was September, wasn't it? Uh, two years almost 95, ago. 95, yes. yes. And uh, as I said last time I spoke to Don Hyde on the programme, uh, we don't need to go into all the ramifications, but for, for all sorts of reasons, there have been these huge delays uh, getting uh, permission to take the organ out, but you've now got official permission from Manchester City Council, is that right? Uh, that is correct. We've got a, a verbal permission at the moment, but we're still waiting for the written permission. Right. But you're going to get on with this anyway. We are all <laughs> set to go. All right. Now... As I just said a couple of minutes ago, we've never followed a a project all the way through from the removal of an organ and its reinstallation, so we're looking forward to doing that. What's the first job as far as you're concerned? The first job as far as I'm concerned is to remove the pipework. The pipework will be then removed and, of course, then we can get at the rest of the organ. The chest will then be dismantled and stored. And finally, we hope to lower everything down to the stage. When everything is on the stage, we will take it to the back door and away in the trucks to the various places. It's going to... Going to various storage places, is it? It's, somebody's going to store some 
pieces are going to organ builders for thorough sort of restoration. Does that include the console? Uh, the console is going to be completely rebuilt uh, and also the chests are going to be completely stripped and rebuilt. There's a lot of work to do, isn't there? A tremendous amount of work. And w when do you think the installation is actually going to start in its new home, which of course is the ballroom of Stockport Town Hall? Uh, we hope uh, to start that in, um, what month is it now, about 18 months' time. And are you giving any predictions at all about when you want to have it ready for? Well, we would dearly like to have it playing for the millennium. Yes. Uh, everything the obvious is choice, not going to it? go for the millennium. Uh, but all these delays might have just caught us a little bit too much, but hopefully we will make the millennium. Well, we do wish you all the very best. As I said, we're going to have a chat to you from time to time uh, here on the Organist Entertainment and just see how things are progressing. It's going to be a little while before we can actually hear any uh, music from the organ again, isn't it? So I, will. I think yes. we, uh, we better have one final tune on it uh, before we go upstairs and listen to the blower being turned off for the final time and the fuse is being taken out and we'll all have our hankies ready. Uh, yes, because it's, 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 it's been a wonderful time here at the Free Trade Hall. It's been a, a great venue for the organ, hasn't it? Oh, it's been incredible, yes. I mean, even uh, just lately, it seems to have attracted even more attention. Yeah, it's funny, but, isn't it, when uh, things are coming uh, to an end? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it, it is. Do. But uh, I, I was just having a little run-through on the organ earlier on, and we, we were saying between us that it's unbelievable how well the organ sounds because, of course, the hall has been closed for two years. It hasn't been tuned for well over a year, and I don't think you've done any maintenance on it for even longer than that, have you? That's very true. Uh, it was tuned just in time for your last recording, which was in June, over a year ago. Yes. And uh, maintenance-wise, well, knowing the fact that it was coming out, uh, we had some problems in the console. But uh, I've decided not to do a major strip down there well, because it's point, just not it? worth it. No, absolutely. So it's incredible how it's really stood up all this time without any attention. Absolutely. Well, we'll have a, a, a final tune on it and uh, then we'll nip upstairs. And I think uh, probably a, a very good piece to play would be the uh, goodbye song from uh, White Horse Inn. So we'll have that. Every three months or so, we'll take a look at how the project's going, and we'll certainly look forward to the moment when the blower is switched on again, and we hear the first sounds from the new Stockport Town Hall ballroom Wurlitzer. Well, I'll have some content news for you after this next item, which comes from Mark Crossland on Yamaha EL90, with that gorgeous ballad written in 1950, Moonlight in Vermont.
Crossland on Yamaha EL90, Moonlight in Vermont. Well, before we go any further, let's take a look at what's happening concert-wise during the next seven days. Two concerts at the United Reformed Church in Dewsbury during the coming week. Tomorrow the 27th, Eric Barber plays Lunchtime Light Music at 12.35. And on Sunday the 31st, Arnold Loxham at 2.30. Also at half past two on Sunday afternoon, I'll be joining Simon Gledhill at Witten House near Huntingdon. Finally, two more lunchtime concerts at the Pavilion Bournemouth. This Friday the 29th, Michael Waldridge, and next Tuesday, September the 2nd, Jim Lazell, both those at ten past one. Well, our finale this week is Mule's exciting toccata, Carillon Sorti, played on the organ of Turku Cathedral in Finland by Christopher Herrick.
Christopher Herrick playing Carillon Sorti on the organ of Turku Cathedral in Finland and rounding things off for this week. Another reminder of our 24-hour free-of-charge Radio 2 helpline number for general details about the organ world or recordings you've heard here on the programme. 0800 022 022. That's 0800 022 022 for the Radio 2 helpline. Thanks for your company this evening. Hope you'll be able to join me again at the same time next Tuesday. But until then, with thanks to producer Stuart Hobday, this is Nigel Ogden saying have a good week, all the best, and bye-bye.